Well, hello guys and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be creating a contact form and submitting the information to Supervise. So Supervise is a really nice uh, database. It's going to be an alternative to Firebase and it's, it's really cool because first it's open source and second it uses Postgres, which is a really a strong database. And the best thing is that it's free for trying. And let's see what we have here. So what I have is I already have a, a, a page that I'm using Bulma. I have, uh, well, this is just to my data. And what's it's important is that I have this form element. And here I'm, I just give it uh, every element. I make, make sure that I give it a, a name. So this name is going to be every row, every column that we have in our database. That's, that's important for, for this example. And some of these inputs are also required. Uh, for, uh, in the in the markup and another thing that I'm using is I'm using this extension called live server for VS code which will uh, refresh every time you save the, the, the file will refresh the, the page which is really nice so now that we have let's start with supervise so for, for this group you will need to create an account you just you just can click here and it will make you authenticate with github so you will need a github account once you authenticate with the app, you're going to have like something like this where you can create a new project. So let me just create a new project. You will need to select the organization and we, let's give it a name. So I'm going to call it Superbase Form. Uh, this password is not relevant for us, but you will need it if you're planning to use this database in another place, like another server. And here you make sure you select some region that's close to where you're located. This will take a few minutes, so I will be back in a moment. Okay, once everything completed, you will have these setting files that we are going to use now. So if you go here, you can see that we have a library for JavaScript, which is what we are going to use. So this is the documentation and for installing that library, you can either use a node package or you can use the CDN. We're going to use the CDN because we don't have any, we don't have a workflow for for npm right now. So I'm just going to copy this script and I'm going to paste that at the end of the or body tag. This is this is what's going to provide the the client and for initializing initializing the application, we are just going to copy this this code. And if I go back here, I can just replace what well, I need also to keep this in a, in a script tag. And here we are not going to use import because we are not using, we are not using modules. So we are going to say const create client equals superbase. So this is, this is, this is the Superbase object that now we have because we imported that library. Now we can just repla replace that Superbase object with this create, create client function. And for this, for this thing, we are going to need, need the URL of our application, which is right here. This is the URL of our, uh, of our, of our database. And we can just copy that here. And we also need this public anon key, which is the key that we just have right here. So now we have our client. Now that we have our client, the next thing is we're going to define our, our table in our database. And here we have this, this, this link. And right here, we're just going to give it a name. So this table is going to be called entries and it's going to have a primary key. It will also take a little bit of time. And now we can start adding columns. So, so this is important. It's not like Firebase that you can just throw anything to the database and it will just store it. You need to define like a schema. And, and that could be good or bad <laughs> depending on what you need. For this case, it's actually good because we can restrict what's the fields that we want the users to submit for our contact form. So the first field is going to be the email and we need it to give it a type. It's going to be the type of text and it's not going to be nullable, so it needs to be present. The next field is going to be called name, and these are the, the names that we gave to our forms. So this also is going to be a text and it's also not going to be nullable. The next thing is going to be called subject, and this is the subject of the contact form. We're going to give it a text and this one can be nullable. 
And the last thing, data that we want to collect is the message. So this is the message that the user's, user writes to the, to the form, and this one is also not nullable. The last thing that we need, we're going to add is, is a field called created app. And this field, we're not going to submit from the client. And it's just going to be of the time date and the default value is going to be now. So the current moment of, of the database. And this one is, it can also be nullable. So now we have our schema. The next thing that we need to do is just start adding data to that database, which is actually pretty simple. So first I'm going to grab the form from the DOM. I'm going to give it the name of form and I can use document that query selector. And here I'm going to select that using the ID of the form. So the ID of the form is contact form. The next thing is I'm going to add for that form, I'm going to add an event listener for the event, it's going to be submit. So when the user submits this form, we're going to execute an async function that has, that has the event as a parameter. And because this is a form, we want to prevent the default thing from that form. And the default thing is that if we submit what is required, but if you submit, it will actually refresh the page. So we don't want that to happen. So we can say, event that prevent default and this is going to prevent the page to re restarting also make sure that your submit button has the type submit inside the form object so so you can uh, when you click this it's going to submit that form we are preventing the default now we need to grab every input inside our forms for that we can declare a new variable called form inputs and for it's going to be a node array of, of nodes. Well, it's not an array, but it's going to be a collection of, of, of nodes. And for that, we can grab the form and we can use the query selector all. So this, this can select a bunch of elements at the same time. And the elements that we have are input. We have two inputs, comma, a select, a select element. We also have a select element. And the next one is a text area. These are the elements that we have. So now we can look into those elements. We are going to have a callback that has every element. And here I'm going to declare a variable called submission. It's going to be an empty array, an empty object. And now we, we are going to fill that object with every value of that the user entered. So first I'm going to the, the construct from every element. So I'm using the object the construction. And from here I'm going to grab the value and I'm also going to grab the name. So that's what's, what's important that we name every input. And now I can say if we have a value, so if we have a value, we are going to con start filling that object. So it's going to have a key that's, that's the name and it, this is going to equal the value. So this is the object and we can check if everything worked making a console.log of that submission. So this should take care of grabbing all of the values of every element in the form. So now if I fill this and uh, we now have an object that has every element, every value, name and value of that form, which is what we want. And the next thing is we're going to submit that information to our database. So for that, we're going to use our client, the Supabase, Supabase client. And here we are going to, uh, wait, Supabase, and we're going to grab the table that we want to make operations, which is entries. This is the table. And here we are going to use the method insert. So that is going to insert a new row into the element. So this has a, accepts an array, so we can have multiple rows. But, but for now, we're just going to have one row that's going to be this submission. So it's actually that simple to store data into our database. Here we can deconstruct the result of this operation. And we have two elements. We have an error and we also have the data. So we can just check if everything went well by logging the error and the data. If I hit save and now I submit this 
for we should now have the data right here so we don't have we have error null we don't have any error and we have what we the thing that we just created and if we go back to our database and we refresh we can see that we have our entry with with all the fields that we declared and what i now want to do is to give some some feedback to the user so if the data if if we have an error we are going to alert the user with a message that's going to say uh, there was an error please try again otherwise we are just going to say alert uh, thanks for contacting us and the last thing that i want to do is when i submit this i want to clear all of the fields so for that i can just grab the form inputs and i can for each element of that of my form i'm going to replace the value with an empty array so this will reset everything now we can test if it's working this is working if i change the email and i write here it says thanks for contacting contacting us if i go back to the console and i refresh we can see that we have our submission right here and yeah and that's pretty much it but we have one big issue so the issue is that this form is completely insecure and why is that because you can see that we didn't need any special permission to write into the database so that means that everyone can also read delete or update rows into the database which is not good because everyone could read our submissions and Supabase makes this we can protect this with Supabase which is actually really simple what we need to do is we need to go to the authentication tab if we go here to policies we can create a new we can we first need to enable this feature and this feature is from postgres it's called uh, row uh, row level security so this can protect every row of the database with certain rules that we can define so we first need to enable that if we enable this every operation is going to be forbidden now so we can can't write we can read or anything into the database but we can add a new policy and we can start from scratch and the operation that we want to allow is on every user can insert new rows into the database but non-user can either read update delete or a, a, a row into the database so we're go just going to say that this is going to be for the insert operation and here we need to return a boolean value so here we can just return true <laughs> we can have more complex statements like checking user ids or something like that but here we're just going to return a true so everyone can write into the database and we are, need to give it a name so the name can be everyone can write and row here we can review what we are creating and this was execute, execute this statement and we can now save the policy the policy so now everyone can write but no one can either delete update or read into the database if we test this we will actually have an error you can see that we have an error and the reason for that is that we are with this insert operation we are writing to the database with insert but we are also reading to the database because we are having this data object so we just want to write to the database we don't want to read to the database and for that we can just pass the second parameter here with an, ob an object that's going to have some options and the option that we want is going to be called returning this will control what we return to the user and this is going to be minimal so this is what we need to add and now we don't need to read the submission from the data from the database with this configuration if i hit save now it should work so if i hit submit yeah and you can see that says thanks for contacting us and if we go back here to our table we should see our entry right here so that's that's pretty much it i think it's really cool that you can use this database that easily for free and you, you can use it for your submissions or, or anything like that 
I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next time.